I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Wednesday, November the 6th, brought to you in part by Endovac Animal Health. Endovac Beef with Immune Plus provides broad spectrum gram negative bacterial protection to your herd. Endovac protects against Pasteurella, Manhemia, E. coli, and Salmonella. For more information, go to endovacanimalhealth.com. Be sure and check out this video uh, at the end of this episode of the Feeder Flash. Deja vu, but better. Uh, thinking back uh, about the, the previous uh, presidential election night uh, in 2020, uh, it was getting late at night like it is uh, right now as I'm recording this, and, and we were feeling pretty confident, and we let our guard down and we went to bed, and then uh, when we woke up somehow overnight, magically exactly the, the amount of votes that were needed come in uh, through the, the pandemic altered uh, ways that they were sending in the votes. And uh, amazingly, uh, you know, uh, President Magoo ended up getting even more uh, votes than, than Obama did in uh, traditionally black districts. Uh, there were some places, some counties like in uh, Wisconsin, where they had um, more more people voted than there was people registered to vote. I mean, crazy stuff like that. But you can't say it out loud that you think uh, that they stole the election, so I won't say that. But it, it's, uh, it's a lot like that here uh, late Tuesday night, and it's looking good. It looks like uh, uh, Kamala's uh, path to victory is very narrow. And it looks like uh, President Trump's is is uh, has many many options there. He's been performing well, uh, especially uh, with Hispanic men uh, predominantly, and that's where as I've been watching it, and I'm sure you guys watched it too. But uh, I tell you what, and I know a lot of Hispanic men, and, and I've talked to them about the open borders and things. That is a literal slap in the face for Hispanics that have come over here, been over here legally, even if they've been over here for a couple generations, it is a slap in the face for them to go through all the hoops that they went through to be here legally, just to let her, uh, let the let the gates down and just let them pour in. And, and, and you know, and they're not necessarily from Mexico. I tell you, ones are the ones that are pouring in. Anybody from Mexico that wanted to come over, they would have, they would have, you know, stepped over the fence that's there or the wire or just open hole any time. These people that are coming, they're coming from uh, South America. They're coming from Africa. They're coming from places we don't even know uh, where they're at and haven't ever heard of them. And they're not uh, here for good reason. They don't just want to work, guys. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's looking very, very good. Uh, I'm afraid to go to bed. Uh, I'm afraid to wait any longer to record this feeder flash because uh, I might get to, uh, you know, uh, celebrating too much. Uh, not that we haven't already started a little bit, but uh, I I'm in hopes. And every time this comes about, I'm just in hopes that there's still more of us than there are of them. As I sit here, and my uh, traditional cowboy hat, long sleeve, button up shirt, uh, no tattoos in the same color hair that God gave me when I started. Uh, but uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. But uh, uh, we're, we're all looking forward, most of us uh, conservative types. And, and I know you people that's been putting all this pro Kamala stuff, how are you liking it now? Uh, all over my video. But I uh, tell you what. Uh, we're ready for tax cuts. We're, met, we're ready for America first instead of last. We're tired of paying for all these other countries' wars. Uh, we're, let, we're ready for lower interest rates. Uh, we, we didn't want them cramming down, uh, you know, this pro-choice, which is pro-abortion, uh, down everybody's throats. You know, Trump went in there and he, he upturned uh, Roe v. Wade and he, he's letting the states uh, figure that out. And I mean, she just wanted, there's too many people uh, that was following Kamala that think that abortion is a form of birth control. It is not. It's too late for that. And there's way too many people, I was talking to a good friend of mine just the other day, that have trouble 
uh, with pregnancies and, and getting pregnancies. He was having trouble, him and his young wife were having trouble uh, getting pregnant and he was very frustrated about it. And then you got people that are just, uh, just terminating those, uh, like I said, a as a form of birth control. That's absolutely ridiculous, it's barbaric. Uh, but, um, you know, we want some pro-business. We want a businessman in there, uh, somebody that has built things and changed skylines and, and employed, you know, thousands and thousands of people and put things together, not somebody uh, that's never uh, signed the front of a paycheck before, somebody that, that made most of the rungs on her ladder when she was young on her back, uh, by being the mistress of, uh, of famous people or, or powerful people. Uh, you know, that's not what we want. That's not what I want my daughters looking at as they try to look up to our leaders. Tell you what, we need peace through strength. Uh, we're, we're glad to have Trump back in there. We're glad that uh, it appears we're going to have a, uh, a Republican and a conservative Senate. Uh, not sure about the House but uh, may be able to get some things done if they would just back off of him. You know, uh, you know st stop all the, all the crap that all the hurdles they put in front of him like they did the whole time he was president the last time. But I tell you what, pretty exciting stuff. Talk about your cattle market. Uh, didn't, haven't seen any fats trade so far, but our auction fat market was quite a bit lower. And that kind of scares us a little bit. The board's been rough so far this week already. Auction calves quite a bit lower from what I've seen. Nothing pushing the, the extreme tops that we've seen here over the last couple of weeks. But uh, uh, but feeder cattle uh, in your auction selling steady to higher. So, uh, you know, that's a good thing. I'm going to tell you about all the prices here in just a minute. I want to talk to you about an opportunity to possibly buy something that doesn't come up for sale very often. And it's with uh, Sundgren Realty. Joe Sundgren there, and he's got all his associates there. Uh, they are going to have the Myers Ranch auction on Friday, November 22nd at 2 o'clock p.m. The auction is going to be held at El Dorado Civic Center in El Dorado, Kansas. Now, this is a dream deal. Now, I'm sure, uh, you know, not surely not all of us, but maybe somebody's going to have the money to put this deal together. But they've got 540 acres uh, they're going to be sold in four tracks. Uh, it's it's uh, the the ground is right there on the uh, Turkey Creek. Uh, they've got Flint Hills pasture included in that. Uh, they've got tillable uh, farm ground included in that. Uh, they've got uh, a hunting lodge and they've got hunting ground uh, included in that. There's a livestock headquarters there. Two homes. Uh, you know facilities. Just, I mean, just a dream deal there, guys, uh, if you dream really, really big. Uh, but check that deal out and put it on your calendar here. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you can find out more information at sungrin.com and be sure and check that out. Also, elite livestock sales. Uh, my buddies that uh, used to be in the Montgomery Stockyards down in Alabama having another one of their video sales coming up this Thursday, November the 7th at 3 o'clock Central. Uh, you can go to Elite Livestock Sales and see more about what they've got consigned. You can go on to DV Auction, uh, go out to Thursday and look on there. Uh, but they've got several loads of weaned calves and yearlings. No ballers, just load lots of home-raised weaned calves and, and yearlings on there. It's going to be on DVAuction.com. Uh, check that sale out. It's going to be this Thursday, uh, 3 o'clock Central in the afternoon. And then uh, my buddy Jack Harrison at Callaway Livestock Center in Kingdom City, Missouri. He's got a special cow sale. Uh, that's also going to be coming up on Thursday. And it's in the evening, guys. Uh, starts at 6 or 7. I, I think it's 6 o'clock in the evening there. But be sure and check them out on dvauction.com if you can't get to the sale. They've got a really premier offering, including Wall Street Angus uh, production sale there. And not very often do you get to go uh, to a production sale at a, at a typically commercial special cow sale, but they're going to have 125 registered uh, bred heifers and bred cows there, and then 30 registered uh, breeding bulls 
from 14 to 18 months. And I tell you what, the EPDs, you'll love them on there and the pedigrees on them. Uh, but uh, they've got that. And then they've got their uh, regular offering of commercial stock. It's going to be very impressive. Got 200 bred heifers on there. They'll all be fancy and mostly black. Uh, 200 young fall pears, 300 heavy bred cows, and 300 spring calving cows there. And you can view and bid that sale at dvauction.com, Callaway Livestock Center, Kingdom City, Missouri. Let's check out uh, your board for Tuesday. December live cattle futures down 30 cents at 184.77. February up 2 cents at 185.95. And your back months were up from 12 cents to up 45 cents. November feeder cattle down 20 cents at 246.15. January down 7 cents at 242.35. And your back months were down 2 cents to up 75. So uh, just kind of an up and down day there, but not real supportive. Look at your grains. December corn was up two cents a bushel at 418 and a half. January beans up four and a half cents a bushel at 1001 and three quarters. Kansas City hard red winter wheat for December up five and three quarters cent at 576 and three quarters. Uh, your fat cattle trade brought to you by Legacy Beef Cooperative. Uh, going to own 20% share in that uh, Cattleman's Heritage beef plant going up. Uh, near Council Bluffs, Iowa. Check that out, guys. You want to get in on that. Uh, haven't had any direct trade to speak of uh, this week at all. We did see some late Monday trade in Kansas. Somebody sold out at 189, which would be a buck cheaper. They got scared of the board there, and we always have some weak sisters that uh, that that uh, uh, jump the gun on things, and we did see a little bit of that, but wasn't significant. Haven't seen a hoof trade anywhere else. Uh, negotiated cash in your five areas, uh, but we did have that market maker and it was lower. Stockman's livestock market in Yankton, South Dakota, best fat cattle auction we have in our nation. 2,000 head in overnight, 3,200 head, and that was, a, that was a lot of cattle there, a lot of fat cattle for that sale. But conventional cattle sold steady to a dollar and a half cheaper from 183 to 188. And uh, then your program cattle, and not so much drug free, but mostly all non implanted, and that's the bulk of their run. Non implanted cattle selling from 185 to 191, and uh, that's three to five bucks lower, turning only two to three dollars lower, but still, uh, I hate to see the market turning lower at that, like that. And, uh, you know, they, they're well represented there with order buyers, uh, you know, um, salary buyers and, and railers that sit in there every week. but. We thank Gary Marks for that information. Uh, talk about your box beef cutout values. They were mixed. Choice cuts were up 30 cents at 317.21. Selects down a buck 92 at 285.24. Your slaughter up through the first two days of the week, 244,000. That was 1,000 less than the same point a week ago and 4,000 less than the same point a year ago. Talk about what else is going on. Uh, we're still uh, celebrating our 10-year anniversary of the Feeder Flash. It's hard to believe that. Almost 2,400 episodes. That's a lot of me talking. And uh, I feel for some of you guys that have watched a large percentage of those. But I do appreciate you so much. And I'm humbled by the following that we have. Uh, for you guys that watch this on YouTube regularly, go down and hit that subscribe button, guys. We want to see how close we can get to 20,000 subscribers here by the end of the year. But uh, we've, we've uh, just been uh, blessed by such a good following here and all of our sponsors and all of our listeners. And, and uh, we're going to have another contest here today on Wednesday. But I will give you the winner of Tuesday's contest. And we did the random draw after we put all the, uh, the correct answers together. And Tuesday's winner is Nate Yemker. And I'm not, I don't know how to say that, that last name, but it's Y-M-K-E-R. Yamker is the only way I know how to say it. Uh, from Yamker Brothers Cattle in, uh, in Stickney, South Dakota. So, there goes the show. We're not picking friends because I'm sure that I don't know this fella, but I bet he's a pretty good guy if he's a Feeder Flash gang member. 
and uh, he's going to be uh, getting all the prizes uh, from, from uh, of course, the big cooler and then all the, the sail barn swag that we promised for Tuesday's contest. Now, on today's contest, Wednesday's contest for the 10-year Feeder Flash anniversary, our major sponsor is Midwest Ag Group. Uh, Midwest Ag Group is out of eastern South Dakota and, uh, and they are putting together their own swag bag. Uh, of course, you're still going to get the sale barn swag bag, but you're going to get a swag bag from Midwest Ag Group. And I have received uh, one of those uh, vests from Midwest Ag Group, and it's very nice, and I like it, and I like their logo, and, and I like uh, the folks that, uh, that are, are there with Midwest Ag Group. But the question is, what type of product does Midwest Ag Group offer? And what you do is you find that out, you send the answer to feederflash at nationalbeefwire.com and you're, and you're registered to, to win and we'll just do a random drawing of the, of the correct answers there to see who the winner is and I'll tell you on the next Feeder Flash. Let's talk about your uh, feeder cattle markets, your real-time index on DV auction late in the day, like I said, on Tuesday, uh, but not yet have we heard the announcement of, the, of who's going to be president next time. I'm scared to death they're going to steal it, but uh, as far as we can tell, it, we, we're looking good right now. But real-time index based on an 800-pound cash auction steer up through your middle 12 states, sitting at 250.16. That was 23 cents higher. So we were about that much lower on Monday from late last week with some big sales over the weekend. Uh, we're holding good uh, on our feeder cattle uh, weights going right into the feedlot. Your latest CME cash feeder cattle index, I told you, was going to fall some. It is 250.73, so sitting very near your RTI. Let's talk about your big sales on Tuesday. Ozarks Regional Stockyard in West Plains, Missouri. They had a lighter run because it's so wet around, and, and uh, they were really needing a rain. Uh, they're sitting on rocks there, guys, and they're about a week away from a drought all the time there in south central Missouri but uh, they did get big rains in fact there were some areas local there that got as much as 12 inches of rain but four to six was pretty general there and the markets like we've been seeing all around it was very uneven and Dan Hill does a great job uh, of calling that market and he said it was just uneven it was from four dollars lower to four dollars higher uh, didn't have any real stick out uh, deals there they did have uh, uh, some cattle on their, on their in-house video that they always do, but they've also uh, released their schedule for the rest of the year. They're going to be having a pre-vax uh, special, feeder calf special, uh, on December the 3rd. There'll be some premier uh, consignments there. Uh, be sure to put that on your schedule, and they'll be all uh, weaned and vaccinated guys. Uh, they're going to have a special cow sale on December the 7th and they are and they aren't always this way but they are going to be closed two full weeks uh, for the holidays and talking about Christmas and so uh, just plan on that for your calendars guys I'm going to give you several individual quotes uh, didn't see any any light calves that sold nearly as high as what we've been talking about the last several visits you know with a, with a light 400 pound fancy string of steer calves bringing it up around four dollars a pound didn't see anything like that uh, didn't see any 500 pound steer calves in a big group sell close to, to 340 plus or 350 so uh, but we did see some really good sales on some bigger cattle feeding type cattle especially the yearlings how about Philip livestock auction and I'm sure these were calves but 84 head of 706 pound steers bring 279 at Philip the Giant and I thought that was pretty impressive how about Beaver County Stockyards now I know these are yearlings been out on grass uh, 109 head 792 pound calf weight yearlings for this time of year guys bring 263.10 weighing nearly 800 pounds. I thought that was pretty good in the Oklahoma Panhandle there. How about Unionville Livestock Market in Unionville, Missouri, extreme north central Missouri there. These are the rockin' R's. They had just two loads in there this time, but this is one of them. 61 head, weighed 869, bring 256.75, weighing at 870, guys. I thought that was awfully good. How about Lolly Brothers Livestock Market 
In central Missouri, they sell 64 steers, weigh 822, and bring 264.85. That's very impressive. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Tuesday, your Macrosin no BS top quote for the day, come out of Kimball Livestock Exchange in Kimball, South Dakota. 54 steers weighed 826 pounds at 266.75. And that's your feeder flash for Wednesday. My name is Matt Pierce. I'm from Okeechobee, Florida. And uh, we're at Pierce Cattle Company. Everything that comes through the chute gets a shot in the back. And, and it is smooth and easy, a better re immune response. We trade a lot of uh, stalker cows, and then we have probably around 2,400 head of cow-calf pairs, uh, brood cows. We've implemented in pre-breeding, post-breeding. Our pink eye's gone down to almost zero. Same way with foot rot, and, and that's due to a good vaccination program and, uh, and some of the stuff we're seeing out of Endovac.